What would you like to tell the Filipinos here in Texas since we already reopened the consulate? I'd like to tell them we're back. We're, we, are, we are in business and we are here to, yeah, to make sure that uh, we look after the interests as well as the interests of the Philippines here in the United States. And what can you say since uh, some people are complaining that passport application is kind of slow and uh, also the phone calls that are unanswered, what can you say about it? You know, uh, this is the thing. I, what, what I'd like our Kababayans to understand is that we are a small team, right? We are 11 people here and we are doing everything, the whole spectrum of services we provide. Uh, sometimes when you call, the phones that are that are that we have are engaged talking to other people who called ahead of you so i would i would ask them to be patient because we are trying to address all of these uh small uh issues that we have about slow passport deliveries our passports are not manufactured here we captured the data here we have the passports manufactured in the Philippines and they are sent back to us here. Now, no matter how fast we do things here, if they are not fast enough over there, it impacts on us. It appears that we are the ones who are slow. But like I said, we're doing our best to deliver the services as best as we can, given the challenges that we have. And I just appeal for understanding that we've had growing pains already. Uh, in fact, we should have done our uh, our passport services as early as the third quarter of last year. But again, logistics issues, they happen. And are you still going to continue the consular outreach in Dallas yes. and Macau? No, not just Dallas. There are other jurisdictions that we have. Uh, Texas itself is pretty big. And uh, we'd like to do our mobile services to other, to other states that we cover, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi the best way we can. This is obviously uh, a great uh, occasion where we reopened the Houston uh, consulate. And this is just uh, an indication of the commitment that the Philippine government has in trying to do what they can for Filipinos and Filipino Americans who live here in the United States. Uh, I know that there are about uh, 200,000 in the jurisdiction of the consulate. So, um, and I'm sure that uh, in the future we'll be opening more consulates here in the United States since we are a growing community, we're about, uh, I think, 4.3 million Filipinos, Filipino-Americans who live here in the United States. And sir, as an ambassador, what do you do to mold a better relationship between Philippines and U.S.? Well, we've had a very good and long relationship with this country, so it's just a matter of really just uh, sort of like renewing it and continuously uh, assuring uh, the people here and, of course, the people in Washington, D.C., that we are one of their closest friends and closest allies. 85% of Filipinos believe that the United States is the most trusted ally and we will continue to trust in them just as I hope they trust in us as their friend and nation. Filipinos are just getting killed in the Philippines. Well, I don't know if it's misinformation, but you know that there, uh, when, when the president took office, he said that he was going to try to, or he wants to wipe out the drug problem in the Philippines. And obviously when you have a drug situation like that, the drug problem, uh, there are a number of people who get killed perhaps in encounters, but most of these are, are, are really because of the, the drug lords that, uh, uh, that were in, in the beginning. There was a, what they call a mafia killing. That were kill it's very hard to explain it really in, in just a few words, but the bottom line is uh, this is something that um, needed to be done, and uh, many people who... Uh, have been to the Philippines, have now realized how important for us to clean it up. Uh, as you know, uh, the terrorists in Mindanao, especially in Marawi, they were funded mostly by drug money. And so it is something that uh, it's for the security of our country and it's also for the security of all other countries that uh, we wipe out this, this, this evil uh, menace. Um, do you think the U.S. has projects or programs to help developing countries like the Philippines? Uh, yes, we, 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 we've, uh, we're in constant uh, touch with the U.S. government in, in terms of uh, trying to find ways and means uh, in, in helping our situation, especially in, in the, we have a very good uh, relationship with the law enforcement agencies. For instance, we share a lot of information, intelligence information, 
and in, in interdicting or in intercepting many of these uh, things. Sir. What can you say now that the Philippine Consulate in uh, Houston is already open? Well, we're very proud and honored that after 25 years we opened uh, another consulate here. And uh, I, all I can say is um, under the leadership of our new Consul General, Consul General Gerald Santos, uh, the consulate will be able to really take good care of the Filipino-American community, not just in Texas, but in the other states under their jurisdiction. We're very proud of them. Any message to the Filipinos in Texas? Well, um, since uh, Texas is no longer under the jurisdiction of Los Angeles, we will miss you, of course, uh, but you're all welcome to visit L.A. Uh, all I can say is uh, we are very, very proud of all your achievements here and uh, keep up the good work. Mabuhay po kayo lahat. How do you feel now that the PCG here in Houston is finally open? Tremendous excitement and relief because for 20 years, uh, as many people know, we have been, uh, we've been uh, petitioning for this reopening no? with the help of the former ambassadors, the former consul generals from LA, and then the community in general uh, have been working for this. And finally, it's here and just tremendous excitement. Uh, after 25 years that we didn't have a consulate in Houston. This is, this is a wonderful development. And I've heard we're still going to continue the outreach right, programs uh, in Dallas and McAllen? Hopefully. Yeah. Do you uh, have any um, estimated time frame? Uh, before the end of the year, according to Consul General Gerald Santos, when he came to Dallas, that he will continue the outreach program. The reason for that is Texas is so big. Geographically, geographically, it's bigger than, than California. So you can imagine the Filipinos are spread out throughout the state, not only in Texas, but also in neighboring states. You know, Oklahoma, Arkansas, New Orleans, uh, uh, New Mexico. Uh, those are all under the jurisdiction of the new Consul General. So it is an ine inevitability that the, the, the consular outreach will continue. Ethel Mercado here, who is now the consul, the honorary consul, founded the Philippine American Chamber of Commerce. And yes, we have been the partners of the consulate for the last 10 years. They bring the consular officials from the consulate and then we provide the staff support. That will continue. Any message to the Filipinos of Houston, Texas? Well, to the Filipinos of Houston, Texas, I'm very happy for you that the consulate is now open here and a little less work for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy, first of all, congratulations, and uh, you have a very able Consul General here, Gerald Santos, and now I'm happy I, four of the original states under Chicago is now under Houston, which are the Oklahoma, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. To our beloved Kababayans here in the United States, to our friends in the United States government, the city of Houston, and the consular generals, or the consular corps, and to the new consulate general and the important milestone that we have opened today. Mabuhay sa inyo lahat.